This presentation is about what happens if either revenue or costs change. It's the theme three equivalent of the theme one diagram where demand and supply changes. It's a really important set of diagrams to grasp insofar as this is really a favorite topic area that examiners love to test. So we start with a quick recap of how to do the profit diagram. Uh, we start off with the cost curves. Remember the marginal cost curve must cut the average cost curve at its lowest point. We then add on the revenue curves. So the average revenue curve is a demand curve. Remember the marginal revenue curve is horizontally roughly halfway to the average revenue curve. We get the profit maximizing quantity from the profit maximizing conditions, MC equals MR. And then we chase that up to the demand curve to find what price this quantity will sell at. Logically, the difference between the price and the average cost is the unit profit. And if we multiply that by the number of units, we get the total profit, which is the area P, A, B, C. Everything else we're going to do on this presentation assumes that you can draw this basic diagram. So if you can't, I suggest that you pause the video at this point and go off and practice. Imagine this was a theme one question that was about the impact on the car industry uh, of the end of a recession. You would probably turn around and say, well, using a diagram, I'm going to show that the price is going to rise, quantity of cars is going to rise. And probably in your written analysis, you would say the profits of car manufacturers would probably rise as well. And you'd be right. The trouble is, is that you can't show the last point on a demand supply diagram. Now, a quick exam point. The examiners say you must use black ink when you're doing an answer. Can I strongly suggest you ignore this and you bring in two colours into the exam room? This is a complex diagram. And without the colours, you could easily find yourself getting confused. So remember, we're looking, we're looking at a car manufacturer and the impact uh, on that car manufacturer of when we come out of recession. Well, the demand curve, in this case, the AR curve, is going to shift right. And you can see on my purple line, I've shifted right that demand curve. Obviously, if the demand curve shifts right, the AR curve shifts right, then the MR curve has got to shift as well. So I've got a new curve that's parallel with the original AR curve and one that's parallel with the original MR curve. So in order to find the new quantity, I need to find where the new MR curve, the purple one, cuts the MC curve, the green one, and that's going to be a quantity Q1. We then follow that quantity up to the new AR curve, the new demand curve, to find the price that this quantity will sell at. And it's P1, and you will see, just like on theme one, that the price has gone up and the quantity has gone up as well. For profit, we need to follow that quantity down to the average cost curve. So I finish up with an average cost of C1. Sometimes C1 is above C, sometimes it's below C. Occasionally it will be exactly the same as C. Doesn't matter. We are looking for the average cost curve. And the total profit is that brown rectangle, P1, E, F, C1. You'll notice that I don't use shading as I sometimes do, because that would really make this diagram complex. So just use letters and refer to those letters when you're doing your analysis. Now that's quite complex. There's six lines going on there. So I strongly suggest that you pause the video at this point and practice because you need to be able to draw a diagram like this. So what about the situation when there's, say, a rise in variable costs? For example, uh, we could have tariffs imposed uh, upon us, uh, which would increase the cost of our imported raw materials, say, when we're manufacturing a car. Again, I would start by drawing the original diagram. Now, if you think about this from a demand supply perspective, if you were to get a question like that, there's an increase in cost, you'd probably shift the supply curve left. You'd probably demonstrate that the price would rise. You'd probably demonstrate that the quantity would go down. Again, you'll see that there's virtually no difference on a cost and revenue diagram. So our unit costs of producing this car have gone up from MC to MC1. 
So my purple line is showing the new higher marginal cost curve. But of course, if marginal costs have risen, well, so has that average cost. So I need a new AC curve that is above the original AC curve. Again, uh, the technical point is that the new MC curve must cut the new AC curve at its lowest point. So what's the new quantity? Well, profit maximization is still MC equals MR, except now we've got a new MC curve. So we're looking at where the red MR curve cuts the new purple MC curve, which is going to be quantity Q1. So quantity sold will drop. Again, we get the price from the demand curve. So our new price P1, our price goes up because our costs have gone up. What do you expect to happen? Uh, and the profit is the difference between the average revenue and the new average costs. So we finish up with a profit of P1 EFC1. And you can see there that total profits have fallen. So price has gone up, quantity has gone down, and profits would fall, which is pretty much the same as what you would have said had you been told about a rise in variable costs on a theme one supply and demand question. Again, you might want to pause uh, before we go on to the next one because that is a really complex and horrible diagram to draw. So finally, we're going to look at a rise in fixed costs. So what if, for example, the interest rate goes up, so the amount, say, that Fords are paying uh, for their bank loan would have risen. Now, interest doesn't actually impact on the cost of manufacturing a car. So the MC curve doesn't change. The AC curve, of course, will change because you have to take into account all of your costs when you're working out your average cost. So we have a simple increase in the AC curve. If I was you, if you can find evidence that it's fixed costs that's changed uh, from your data, then go for this particular option because it's the easiest one to draw. Now, because the marginal costs haven't changed, the MC equals MR condition also wouldn't have changed. So there is no change in quantity. We're still going to be producing exactly the same quantity. And what's more, because the demand curve hasn't changed, we're still going to be selling it for exactly the same price. The difference is that our average costs have gone up. So we just need to look at the new block P, A, E, C1 to give us our new and lower level of profit. Now, that is slightly different to what you would have expected had you been doing a uh, supply and demand analysis. If you've been given a question that talks about, say, the increase in rent or the increased in interest on demand and supply, you'd probably left shift the supply curve, which would suggest that quantity would go down and price would go up. So this one is the only one that's really different to standard uh, economic thinking. And it's because the MC curve hasn't changed. So profit max hasn't changed. So the diagram is easy. The explanation is slightly more complex, but as I say, if I was you, I'd go for this one. And that's it on the diagram.